today I'm preaching a Christmas sermon. So a Christmas sermon, the whole idea about Christmas is giving. Is that okay? The whole idea about Christmas is what? So I'm going to preach about giving. So that's a Christmas sermon. So uh, Genesis 4.2. Here's something that you need to understand about scripture. The best way to teach anything in scripture is to go to the place where that thing was mentioned for the first time. Yeah? The first place we see in giving is in Genesis 4. Anybody that wants to teach in giving, the basis of giving is not in the New Testament, it's Genesis 4. It is called the law of first mention. If, you know, if you're into Bible interpretation, there's something called the law of first mention. It means that the precedent of everything that is taught in scripture follows the first place it was mentioned. Is that okay? So if you want to teach a particular topic, you go back to the place where that thing was first mentioned, you read and study the scope of it, and then you teach from it. If you do that, you will never fail. Is that okay? Because the Old Testament is New Testament revealed. Are you getting me? The Old Testament, uh, the Old Testament is, is, is concealed and revealed in the New Testament. If, if, if I, can, I can say that in a different way. Is that okay? And so, I want us to study this scripture and from this we shall teach everything we have to teach on giving. Is that okay? So this story is not, let me first kill a myth. One of the reasons why people say that Cain's offering was refu refused uh, is because uh, it was irikwanga vegetables. Let me subs. Okay, definitely, if I was God, also I would reject vegetables. <laughs> like, 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 why vegetables? Yeah, yeah. Imagine, unaletea mungu mafora, bora. You know, like, 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 like God does not want shoshoba. Okay, God has throughout Scripture we can see. That God has a thing about meat. Me, I believe in the gospel of meat. I can, I can preach a gospel called a gospel of meat. But I don't want, I don't want to confuse people from the pulpit. But, but the whole idea, when you read this, the Bible says, Then she bore this time uh, his brother Abel, and now Abel was a keeper of what? Sheep. But Cain was a what? A tiller of ground. Next verse. And in the process of time, let's study there. It says in the what? Do you know what it means in the process of time? In the process of time, it means that it took some time. It was not, this was not like, uh, when I say in the process of time we shall talk, it means if, if you come and I'm trying to employ you and I tell you, come and work for me, we shall talk in the process of time. What we are simply saying is like, I'm getting from you, but we are, yet, we are yet to come into terms. It is to say that this guy probably had a number of harvests. You get me? These guys probably had a number of harvests. The process of time had a number of harvests. And then one day he decides, no, I'm going to give an offering. So in the, Greek, in the Hebrew understanding of an offering, Offering was either offering was either grain and vegetables or it was blood related. So the offering and the notice the Bible calls the vegetables offering. You get me? So it's not the question, God never rejected it because it was not blood. That's a, that's a peop, that's people that have not studied the word that say that. So never believe it. Uh, because you can preach. Because when you study scripture, you see more than once throughout scripture where God asks for offering that is not blood offering. You see grain offering. You get me? So it is not consistent because if it is a truth, that truth should have been cemented throughout scripture. That is the thing about interpretation of scripture. If you're teaching us truth that God does not take offering other than blood, it must be there is no other place where we see him take grain, take, take vegetables offering. Are you getting me? But in scripture, we see it happening again. 
So that cannot be correct Bible interpretation. So her offering, there was nothing wrong with her veget his vegetables. So God takes vegetable offering. I just don't think it's his preference. Anyway, but you understand. Because, because if it was his preference, he should just, just, just have, he should just have grown a garden of vegetables. And then, and then decided, this is the garden that shall deliver you from sin. You get. <laughs> like he gets in, eats the whole garden, and then that garden delivers us from sin. Anyway, that's just me trying to be cheeky. So let's understand. So it is at this place that we see the first mention of the word offering. The first mention of the word offering anywhere in scripture is in Genesis 4.3. Is that okay? So, what was the idea behind the word offering in Genesis? Because this is the idea that should run throughout scripture. So, if we are going to talk about giving, if we are going to talk about offering, all things about giving and offerings should be derived from Genesis 4. Is that okay? So, what is the meaning of the word offering as per Genesis 4.2? Number one, the word, uh, the word offering means, uh, the word offering is, is minka. I wish I can pronounce it well in, in Greek. And, and that word means offering, present, gift, sacrificial offering, oblation, and tribute. It means offering, present, gift, sacrificial offering, oblation, tribute. The root word that forms this word is the word appropriation. It's to say to appropriate. So the idea of offering is the idea of appropriation. Say appropriation. Appropriation. Appropriation is a sum of money allocated officially for a particular use. A sum of money what, allocated officially for a particular use. Are you getting me? That is the idea behind appropriation. That is to say, if a man understands offering from appropriation, it means that offering is not something I do on Sunday. Because as far as appropriation and accounting is done, is when finances come in, we take that money and appropriate into different account and spending. Which means on Monday, I'm already appropriating my offering for Sunday. Which means I don't wake up on Sunday to begin to think Nitatoa offering wapi. If you have been eating and spending through the week, the idea behind offering is that even through the week you have been appropriating your offering. Are you getting me? So it then means that offering is not an accident. Are you getting me? Which means that then Sunday... Shouldn't be even the main thing. It's not the main thing. We shouldn't do offering mainly on Sunday. You can actually decide at the end of a month, I am appropriating 100,000, 50,000, 1 million, 20 shillings as my monthly offering. And I have appropriated it. And even when you come on Sunday and pastor precious people, you don't feel bad because you already appropriated it. Are you getting me? Why? Because then you are coming from the... Your mind is like an, an accounting system. Giving is like a bill to you. Yeah. You understand? Giving is like something in your heart. You have put it in your heart that me, I am a giver. You have already sorted that thing. With God, you've sorted. So, because you already... Most of you already know how much you earn on man, per month. Most of you are already knowing your salary every month. What if you appropriate your salary? What if you appropriate your offering at the beginning of the month? Or, at the, or if you are a businessman at the beginning of the week? Because on, by the time you're guessing to Friday, you share your week, you may choma, ama kuna offering, ama kuna. By the time it gets to that day, by the time you're coming to church on Sunday, you don't, it's not a shock. You get me? The reason why it's a shock is because it's not a, in your mind, you didn't live as offering as something that you should appropriate for. 
Actually, if it's possible, we should have, if, if, uh, other than because the culture is different, we should have one Sunday for giving. And everybody gives, and then the rest of the week, we, the rest of the month, we just come. We just come for what? We just, we just receive offering for maybe a breakthrough you got in the middle of the week, maybe of something like that, but you appropriated for it. It is well accounted for. Are you getting me? So, notice what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Put it in amplified version. Because then you begin to understand the mind in some of the things. Deuteronomy 16, 16. It says, three times a year shall you, what? Shall all your males appear before the Lord in the place where he chooses at the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and at the feast of tabernacles or booth. They shall not appear. Uh -huh. They shall not appear before me empty-handed. So, if a man knows that they are going to appear three times a week, and the idea of offering is appropriation, how can that man then appear before the Lord without an offering? So, it is right to say, then that man, you shall not. How can you? Because from your last visit, you're already planning for your next visit. He says, three times a year. So, for the, when you go to the first time, a month before that, you're already appropriating money for your appearance before him. The next time you go, the next time you're, you're going, so the time you leave, you're already, you begin to appropriate. So, tomorrow morning, you're beginning to appropriate for your offering for Sunday. Because, let me ask you, you know if you're going to go to Christmas to the village or not. You know, like you're sure about what? You're sure about this weekend milk and tea. So, you're sure. It's not a, why is it, why then is offering an afterthought? It's because we never were thought, taught the basic understanding of an offering. We never were told it's something you should appropriate. You should budget for your offering like you budget for anything. That is, do you know why most people are manipulated? Most people are manipulated because offerings, offerings, if you go to a meeting and a man of God says the right word, you, you go to a meeting open. You go to a meeting open and for you, you are like, Atta. that is a day because you, you don't have a culture of giving. If that man says the right words, takes the oil and begins to drip, for you, you have, you're not a giver. You're not a giver. It's because if you are a giver, even if they say anything, we already have a problem. Unless God gives you a new instruction, you are appropriated, you appropriated your offering a long time. So even if a man comes here with gimmicks, that is why we don't do those gimmicks. So even if I roll that Sunday and begin to say that I have fire in my hand, come, 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 come. I need two things. And then, and then I have oil dripping. I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need two people. I need two people here with, uh, with, with 10,000. Come and tap this anointing. You see, my friend, you should tap that anointing at the beginning of the month. Yeah. With your own self. Yeah. In your giving. Yeah. Are you getting me? Why? Because the idea is appropriation. So, so let's, let's not, me by the, if you make it clear. If you can be giving me all the money on Sunday. If you can say we shall give you all the money at the beginning of the month. Yeah? We begin to pay bills. The rest of the month, we don't need to correct to an offering. Unless you have a breakthrough. Actually, so that we stop wasting time trying to pamper you on Sunday with a scripture. You get me? In Kiku, they say, You know what Kogaithia is? Anyway, let me not talk about that. You know, before you milk a cow, before you milk a cow, what you do is that you, you wash its breasts. After you wash its breasts, what do you do? You, you, you wipe mafuta and then you, you know, you, you, you so that you, you're preparing the cow for milking. So normally in the village, they would take a calf. You get me? Yeah? They would take a calf and release a calf to go and, and suck the breast for a few minutes and then remove it. And then now they begin because they calf. <laughs> and that, the problem is that that is what the church has come. So on Sunday, we want to release a calf. To begin to do that so that you can now milk because if the cow thinks that is not the life of the church that's off that is not the mind behind god it's a, a say an appropriation 
Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Because all of, most of you know your income. Secondly, notice that is why in 1 Corinthians 16.2, now he makes this statement. With that in mind, now you can see why he makes this statement of 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2. You remember this verse we read on Sunday? He says, on the first day of the week, of each week, let each one of you personally put aside something and save it up as he has been prospered. In short form, on the first day of the week, so if I'm telling you that every first day of the week, there shall be an appearing, please give something as you have been prospered, which means you're preparing throughout the week for the first day of the week. So that on the first day of the week, you shall come with what? With an offering. Is that okay? Okay, let's go on. I need to move faster. So offering must be planned in advance. Let's go to Genesis. Abel brought an offering of the want. Uh -huh. Firstborn of his flock. He says, and the fat portions. Next point about offering is that offering, offering is a value issue. You give as per your value. So notice, notice this. He says one of the definition of offering is gift. Is that okay? If you're planning to give a gift, you give a gift as per the value you've placed on that person. Because that's an, because the first description of we've seen is appropriation. The next description is gift. You give people gift as you have been, you have a, you have put value on them. Like now I'm expecting my wife to give me uh, 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 a new tablet. You see, because she values me, I expect it. As in as a, as a gift, Christmas gift. Like why would she not give me such a gift? Do you understand? I'm worthy that gift. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, uh, anyway, but you give gifts as per what? As per the value you put it. What would happen if, if, if someone walked in here and gave me and gave me a ring. And then I looked at my wife and I said, babe, here is your ring. Does that show value for her? Does that show value for her? So if I pay for it, if she knows I've paid for it, what happens? It feels like it's valuable. David. Second Samuel 24, 24. I need you now to understand the mind of David in this. Because now, this is the mind of David when he said this, this is Jason. But the king said to that guy, no, but I will certainly buy it from you for a price. He was being given this land for free. He says, I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which does not cost me nothing. So, the truth is, offering will cost you. And it will cost you, and you will give as much as you're willing to pay for the one that you're giving that gift. Important to people. What makes a gift important to people is because that gift is speaks of value. Is it true? Yeah. It's, and it's normally, that is why, even though a man is very wealthy and a man is very prosperous, they are still not outside of gifts. You know, most people say, no, 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 you are a barikiwa, you are a gift, you are My friend, even if they are billionaires, gift still means something to anyone. My wife can buy herself flowers. But because when I buy her flowers, it means a lot. But when I buy her flowers, which she can afford, it is the value I have placed on her by giving her those flowers. She's like, oh my God, he's thinking about me. Oh my God, I have been considered. So, so the ideal of you gifting God is definitely he owns the world. But it's the value that you attach to the gift that moves him. Are you now noticing that giving cannot be a thing you don't do with your mind involved? You cannot then give without your mind being involved. In short form, even your emotion cannot not be involved. Am I blessing you? Is it amazing? Yes. So that is why David says, no, me and God, the relationship we have. No, no, I'm not going to get a gift from someone and take it to him like it is. No, 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 no. For me, I'll have to pay for it. So how have you paid for it? You worked for it. You labored for it. 
You have been working the whole week. Your boss calls you names. My friend, that is your payment for the gift. So that is why when you're offering, by the time you're dropping your offering, it is an expression of value to him. Because this one, even though you gave me strength, my friend, my emotions were not in a good place on that day. Because some of you have crazy bosses, and I'm not, I'm not calling, and please never be a crazy boss. But you understand, eh? Yeah. Secondly, another one. Mm -hmm. Another meaning of giving, sacrificial giving. Amplified, uh, uh, second, second, uh, second Corinthians 8.3, the idea behind offering. Second Corinthians 8.3. I'll come back to this. It says, I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave voluntarily. They gave how? According to their ability and beyond their ability. Any person that wants to be a giver must embrace the idea of sacrificial giving. You're getting me? That giving is not, most people think that you just give within your means. No, 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 no. My friend, <laughs> this thing will cost you. <laughs> the other day, I woke up, we woke up in the morning, and, 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 and so, oh, definitely you guys know, we give, uh, we we'll give, uh, uh, we, saw, we, we swiped, uh, we, we wiped our whole sitting room clean, and then recently we gave the van for the church uh, to a man of God. <laughs> Do you know we don't have enough? We don't have another van. Do you know what happens? This small cars of ours has become the church van. Yeah. You get me? Has become the church van. So, feeding program, shopping for street kids. If you are going to move equipment from one place to the other, guess which car is called for? It is not your car. It is me. In short form, we are setting up. So there are, there are things that I am not enjoying. Why? Because I gave, I gave a car. And so I'm, I'm sacrificially living. Because like, like the other day, I was with my kids having fun. And then Jim could not stop calling me. He would be like, Dad, tunafa, we are supposed to go and shop for street kids. Me, I'm having fun with my children. And people are interrupting me because they, you understand? So you cannot tell me that's not sacrificial giving. You understand? So there will be those moments where giving goes beyond your normal abilities. Forget about, no, no, we just give as we, no, no, no. You give even beyond your ability. There is supposed to be a sacrificial aspect. Let me tell you the sacrificial aspect of God giving. The sacrificial aspect of God giving Jesus was that it, he was the only one. He was the only one. He didn't have a backup plan. Uh, by that time, Jesus was the only son of the father. Are you noticing? So in offering, the sacrificial giving. And then the next one is that offering is a tribute. What is a tribute? Is payment made periodically by one state or ruler to another, especially as a sign of dependence. That is what a tribute. And so if we are paying tribute, and, and this used to happen those times, because they would conquer a kingdom, there would be lords over that kingdom, they would be more powerful than that kingdom. And what would they do? They would do what? They would give tribute to say, no, 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 we are still not very powerful like you. You are stronger than us, and we are giving you tribute. Is that okay? So that's the other aspect. It is a tribute. Why is it a tribute? The Bible says in John 3, 27, John 3, 27. He says, John replied, a man can receive nothing. He claims nothing at all unless it has been granted from him from above. A man, whatever you have, you cannot have anything unless it has been given to you. A man can receive nothing. He, he can claim nothing unless it has been granted to him from heaven. Okay, there's a place of corruption and stuff, so that's different. We're not talking about, we're talking about God is the one that God is the one that gives men. Are you getting me? God is the one that empowers and gives to men. I'm trying to be very sorrow and not get excited so that you get this and never miss it. So what does what do you do? What do you do? So what you do is that when you get an offering, you're saying, Lord, you're my everything. My dependency is on you. The very strength I got to do this job, it came from you. Are you getting me? 
That is what it means. The very strength, the very sobriety, the fact that I'm not crazy, even with that boss being crazy, that, that sobriety is you paying tribute to the king because he's a king. The very fact that you are in a job is paying tribute to him. So your offering is paying tribute to him, your king. I honor you. You are the king. You are the one that has given me the ability to do what I do. So don't just see like you're just giving an offering. No, no, no. The king that is given tribute is not a poor king. Neither is he in poverty. Neither does he need. Most of the time they are very wealthy because they have conquered a number of king, kings, kingdoms. So it's not poverty, but it's to show your dependency on them. I depend you for my promotion. I depend on you for my next level in the work. Anyway, let's go to the next. So what are the keys that you can derive from this scripture on matters giving? Number one, giving is a heart issue. It says, and Abel brought an offering of the finest firstborns of his flock and the fat portion. How many know that for you to be able to give that, you must have considered it in your heart? How many know that this was not something he woke up and he suddenly decided, like it was a thought out because it meant like, no, 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 I'm giving him the best. So it, it was a heart issue. To him, he was giving the best to his best. Are you getting me? He was giving the best to his best. That is why most of the time when we ask, uh, when, when, when ladies complain, uh, oh, uh, you're not spending time with me, you're too busy for me, is because for us men, we easily make the job the most important thing. And so time is a question of value. Let me tell you something. All of you that are dating, don't be lied. Nobody is too busy for one that they love. No one. No one. No one. Is it, people always are available for what they value. People always create time. If anybody has time for people they love and value, anybody has time. Time is not, they are not slaves to time. No, 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 no. Anybody can determine what I'm going to do at what particular time. So if someone is too busy for you, my friend, you're not that important for them. They have something that is attracting their time. Why did I go there? I was solving, I was solving a marriage issue, eh? I was solving a marriage issue, eh? Yeah. That is word of knowledge. Okay, may your marriage be healed. Are you kidding me? So, 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 so here is the idea. When the heart is in the right place, the giving will look right. When the heart is in the right place, the giving will look right. Because, and that is why, when you look at this scripture, when you see the New Testament kind of giving, then the New Testament kind of giving becomes a heart issue. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, it says, let each one of you give thoroughly, uh, thoughtfully. Give what? Give what? Are you noticing it's a th they thought through it? This is giving that has been thought through. So that man that is giving, they must be thoughtful. So, see, ile unaingizanga mkono unasikia hako ni ka 50, hako ni ka 10 bob, hako ni ka 20. And then you're, ah, you're ngiri. You know, like, you know, most of you know, know the difference. You know the difference. Eh? All, all the handbag, you throw it, and then you look at the shillings. I'm glad I don't receive shillings on the offering basket here. But you understand, it's not that way. It's a thought process. He says thoughtfully, with purpose. You're getting me? He says, just as he has decided where. He says, just as which means his heart is a guiding place for his giving. He's not process. He's actually a captive to his heart. Because as a man is in his heart, so is he. Which means your output of giving is, you cannot tell us uh, how much you love God and it doesn't show in your offering. It is impossible. It is Im Ask these ones that have been married. You know, one of the things that I'm, and, and you guys can help me. One of the things that I'm still trying to get is that I, I owe someone a dinner. So the ideal of this dinner is that she wants a dinner where we dress up and walk into a place and I have booked it. And dinner is reserved. 
It's not that I've refused. You understand? I'm working towards it. It's only that how big I want it big. I want it big. That's why I've yet to do it, but I'm doing it. But you can help me. You can help me. Are you getting me? So you get. So the thoughtfulness involved in that might not even be the dinner. It is a thoughtfulness. So when I had it, I thought, this lady is thinking that I have taken time to plan this whole event. Full and everything. That's what makes the whole thing very special. The thoughtfulness. But guess what? It's more of a heart issue. That thoughtfulness will burst off the heart that is put in a particular way. And the problem is that most of us, most of us, the reason why our heart is not in the right place with money is because money has us. You know money can have you. Ma Let me tell you, most of you think that you are far from greed. Some of you, I, can, I, know, I look at your lives and the way you portion your life and I can tell you that you are a slave to money. Do you know why you are a slave to money? Because to you, if, if you think of taking an off to be in a church event, you are wasting time. Because to you, you have enough time to do everything, but church feels like an irritation to the making of your resources. Church alone, church is in, you're irritated by church by itself. You don't have time. Say, Papana, all these guys, the only thing they do is spend a lot of time in church, my friend. And most of the time, your evening has spent on, spent on Netflix. It, I have seen people, you know, people that money has them, they would, they would be willing to lose family over money. They would be willing, when, when jobs come, their first consideration is the money. They never think, if I get this job, thoughtfully, if I get this job, will it be of benefit to my spiritual life? Have you seen people get jobs and lose their spiritual life? Have you seen people get jobs and lose their families? And their families was functioning fine until the job came. It's because to them, the money was more important. And they were like, no, no, no. Me, by the, by the, even if I was given a, a job in a card, and then I'm told, okay, this is me. And then I'm told, leave my wife. I go to another country. I leave her. No, 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 no. Me, I don't think long distance relationships work for me. They can work for you. So I'm not judging anyone. But for me, they don't work. The only relationships that work is the one I wake up next to my wife. You get me? So unless it works, I'm just trying to say, no, do not let money become your decision maker. If money is your decision maker, money has you. One of the greatest things that giving achieves is that giving makes you break hold of money. That is why for me, I don't hold anything. But then if God told me that he got in a far I wouldn't go and bother. If God told me to go and clean up my house today and give it all, or my wardrobe, I wouldn't bother because I decided a long time ago, I have nothing. If God told me, it's time for you to leave fortress to someone and go. These things have no hold on me. That is how you're supposed to live life. Like things don't have a hold of you. That is because the problem is now, when you lose the money, you become stressed. We begin nursing your wounds. We begin nursing you here. Oh, Piliton, Sijui, he has ulcers, he lost everything. My friend, if you lost everything and you're still there, you can get it back. You can get it back. If, you, if money never had you, when you lose a job, you know God will come through again. You're sure. But for you, if your job is your beginning, is your ending. If I don't have this job, and that is why what you value most, if God gave you a direction concerning your job, that is the direction you're willing to disobey. Money has you. Money has you. And I'm not saying people to be, uh, you know, to dishonor jobs and everything. No, I'm just saying go and assess what you value the most between your spiritual life, between your relationship with God and money. And let me tell you something. Money can still have you and you still throw money at God. Are you getting me? Yeah. Money can have you and you're still a giver. <laughs> yeah, you give. You give because to you, you're like, because, <laughs> my friend, haven't you seen, you think I've not seen people that are corrupt 
that give crazily to church. So in our mind, they are givers. Is it true? When a pastor looks at them, they are givers. And they think that the only thing God wants is for you to throw money at him. How it came was not righteous. Because then God doesn't have your heart. What you're doing is just throwing money at God. That is not what God wants. God wants your heart to be sold out for him. He's a, that is why when you sing your all in all, my, at times when I sing my all, you're all I want, you're my everything. In my mind, when I'm thinking my everything, when I'm saying, Lord, you're my everything, I'm picturing in that song, I normally picture around my house, around my life, and in my account. I know in my mind, I'm like, Lord, you are all I want. You're everything to me, everything. And then I'm thinking, is that my car? Is, am I willing to give it? Am I willing to give it? Am I willing? Is that bank account? Am I willing to release it? Is, uh, is sure God my everything? Those are the pictures when I'm saying everything. Most of you are saying everything. 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 Lord, you are kazi yangu atiniache. <laughs> Unilishe, how would you even feed me? That is, those are the pictures when you say everything. When you sing everything, picture the things you'd lay down for him. <laughs> that's how you check your heart. Let me tell you, that's how I check my heart. If anything has me, my wife knows. In my house, everything is dispensable. Anything we have can go any day. Anything we have can go any day. She knows even this church, it can go. If God decides that this church, we should let it go. I don't hold it. Like, there's something that is upon me that can get anything that I would lose. So most people think the thing is the anointing. The thing, the anointing, the grace to get well. The Bible says it is him that gives power to get well. Where is the power? Not on the things, it's on you. Which means if you're placing value on things more than the grace upon your life, then you're missing it. My friend, this church came because of the grace upon our lives. Which means if God told me, Uganda, it is, I would leave it. And we would go, why? Because the grace didn't leave me. That grace didn't leave me. It would be scared if he took it. You know, my first car, the first car I lost, the day uh, the auctioneers came, I went and redeemed it and sold it because it was so bad. I told, everybody was like, why? Why, why are you selling cars? Why are you doing it? Oh, 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 you shouldn't have done. And I told that person, I told them, the oil that brought that will bring another. Yeah. Yes, the last two cars, none of us has had to buy. We have not even paid a penny for the last two cars, including this one. Because the grace was on me. So don't put value. Your job, the grace to, for that job is on you. It's not on the job. The anoint, it, was an, it was something on you that got the job. It was, those people were just partnering with God to employ you. Are you getting me? Those people were just partnering with God to get you a job. That is why you cannot be a, a slave to anything. Anyway, let me move quickly. We are almost there. Okay. He says, notice what he says in NLT. You must each one make up your own mind how much you should give God. Who's making up their own mind? I'm glad this Bible is you. Is, you have this Bible on your phones. He says, don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Don't respond to pressure. Let me tell you something. Don't ever give because you're responding to pressure. There's no day you'll ever see me saying, if you, oh, if you don't give right now, oh, oh, my share. No, my friend, don't ever give to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. If you go to a church and you hear them pressuring, you can have it. Me, I've gone to places where they are pressuring people to give. My friend, and I've left with my money and I was not guilty. Don't, don't go to a church. They are pressuring you. You feel, no, uh, this is pressure. Just walk out with your money. And don't even feel like anything. You did nothing wrong. Walk out. You say, this is a con. I'm not giving. Or even, no, I'm not convicted to give. Live with your money. Don't, don't, yeah. And even say, this instruction is not mine. Just live. You can have the money, the full of it in your account. But you can say, no, this is not mine. 
I don't give to pressure. Am I liberating you? So do, that is why we don't pressure you to give. Actually, I am a firm believer. I, have, I always tell people I have seen more results in asking God to supply. And he has supplied more than I've ever, I've, I've ever told people to give. You know, all of you have been here. I've not put anyone pressure to give. You see why I don't? Yeah. Secondly, okay. So men do not give because it is in their hearts. It, because in their hearts they are not givers. So what is the heart of a giver? The heart of a giver is a generous heart. What is generosity? Ready to give more than the size or importance of give, of give, of, of the gift. What is a generous heart? Readiness to give more than the size or importance of the gift. Remember the, the, the heart I told you that is a giver? You remember me reading to you a verse earlier? Sacrificial giving. 2 Corinthians 8.3 He says, for I testify, I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability they give voluntarily. In short form, that is the heart of generosity. That is the heart of what? It is the readiness. It is not giving. The readiness to give more than the size or importance of the gift. Showing readiness to give more of something, especially money, than strictly necessary or expected. Proverbs 11.24, sorry. The world of the generous gets what? Please, read with me. The world of the generous gets what? The world of the stingy gets what? The world of the generous gets what? That's it. You, 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 can you imagine the heart of generosity determines how big your world is? That is what the scripture says. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. Show me a giver and I'll show you that in the coming days they are going to be bigger than what they are. Show me. You can actually dictate how 2022 will, 23 will be. By your giving. You can decide, oh, my heart is a generous heart. And I'm going to give towards a larger, bigger, greater 2022. You know, I've seen people that give around. And I've seen, it's like the minute you've, the minute you've heard that they are, they are on top. And then you hear another breakthrough and you're like, oh, yeah. When God was not done with you. Because their world gets larger and larger. That's a verse in Proverbs. Another one. Psalms, Psalms 1, 112 verse 5. Psalms 112 verse 5. And he says, a good man deals graciously and lends. He says, life is good to the one who is what? Life is good what? To one that is generous and what? Life is good. It is possible to live a good life. He's actually telling you, giving is one of the ways to guarantee yourself a good life. Life is good for the one who's generous and charitable. Are you noticing that God has a heart for the generous? Mm -hmm. Notice the next verse. What is the, what is the next verse says? It says, conducting affairs with honesty and truth. And then he says something next to the generous. He says something next. He says, there are circum circumstances will never shake them. I love it. To the generous, he says their circumstances will never shake them. And others will, will, and, and others will never forget their example. Who? The generous. Which means when you are a generous man, it doesn't matter what the devil throws your way. Circumstances never shake you. They never shake you. You never, you don't wake up in the morning and like, oh my God, what will I do? No, 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 no. A generous man, circumstances, they never shake them. Next verse. Which means you can never say, well, in Isahau, all people forgot me. Go back. Go back. Go back to that previous verse. He says, and others will never forget their example. Which means God has guaranteed you that men will never forget you. You'll never be forgotten. God will keep reminding men about you. God will keep nudging hearts of men and waking up men in the middle of the night because of you. Because he says, others will never forget their example. 
Next verse. It says, they will not live in fear. I love this. All dread, all what may come for their hearts are firm and ever secure in their faith. Who are these people? They're generous. They will not, they will not live in fear because they know that their future is secured in God. Let me tell you why. Notice scripture. Notice these stories. I actually, this is a scripture I base the thing I'm about to tell you. I actually feel that God has a special kind of favor that he guarantees generous people. Remember Rhoda? You remember? You remember? Yeah? The, the, not Rhoda, what do you call her? This woman that died, Dolcas, Dolcas. You remember Dolcas? The day she died, what happened? What was the basis of her resurrection? What was the basis of her resurrection? Can you imagine? The resurrection was pegged on, 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 not in Jesus' name so much so as her generosity. Okay, remember the guy, the, this gentleman, um, the one that took the gospel. He's not Nicodemus, what do you call him? The, Bible, the one the Bible says that a memorial, Colnerius. What was the basis of the gospel going to him as a first Gentile? His generosity. He says the Bible, his prayer. And his giving had appeared before the Lord. As a memorial. Imagine, his giving had appeared before the Lord. Gene Let me tell you, you cannot joke with the heart of a generous man. That is why they will not live in fear. Because God, you'll notice, study scripture and you'll notice God has a level of protection he has on such kind of men. Look at David. That man was, David was just a joker in his life. Let me tell you, David was a joker. Go tell David I told him that. You understand? David was a joker. Like, how do you see, how do you look from your balcony and see a girl and you're like, come, 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 come. And then you sleep with her and then you're like, how is, he says, I sinned there, I sinned there, everybody gets a sin. You know, and that's, that's what the guy did. He continued in sin. Can you, have you ever read the story of Saul? Of yeah, soul. The man didn't. Like his weaknesses were very small considered to David. But when you look at the life of giving of David, is crazy. The temple is not yet built, and the man is thinking, how will the temple give, shall be built? God never told him. By the way, there's no scripture in which God tells David, "Go ye, build me a temple." There's none. There's none. There's none. It was in his heart that he decided, "I'm building a temple of God." He had made God's business, God's habitation, his mean, his business. He was collecting and calling people to come and bring money so that they can build the house of the Lord. And then you tell me why God will not preserve such a one. I don't know why, but even in life, I have stories of many people that have been preserved because of this character of giving. I can tell you many stories, but let me, let's, let me, let me not go there. Proverbs. Okay, let's, let's go to the next verse. So he says, they will not live in fear. Next verse. Not live in fear or dread what will come. Here's something that I want to say. I'll come and explain it later. Everything you give does not live your life. It goes to your future. Everything you give does not live your life. It goes into your future and waits for you. Why? The Bible says, give uh, give." And it shall come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So which means it's not left to your life. It's coming. At some point, it's coming. If you sow a seed, you're expecting it, that there shall be a season of harvest. Which means any giving that you do has not left your life. It might delay. And even one of these days, I'll teach you on the, on the key of how you need to be calling your harvest. You're getting me? It says, yeah, let's go back to that verse. So it doesn't live your life. And so, giving. That is why if you study scripture, you see in the New Testament more than three scriptures where the Bible talks about giving and storing up. Where moth nor want. Eh? I'm so me Bible. I'm so me Bible on weavers. Okay, not eat up. Anyway. They will not live in fear or dread. All will what may come for their hearts are firm and ever secure in their faith. Next verse. It says, steady and strong 
they will not be afraid. They will calmly face whatever they are for until they all go down in defeat. This is written to a generous man. Are you there? Next verse. I loved this. It says, never stingy, always generous to those in need. You notice that we started with a generous man. It's still him we are talking about him. Never stingy, always generous to those in need. They are lives of influence. Uh -huh. Their lives of influence and honor will never be forgotten. This is the key to growing in influence. He says, he says, will never be forgotten, for they will be full of good deeds. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.28. Are you blessed that far? Is this making sense? I'm trying to be as slow as I can so that you get it. He says, let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may, uh, that he may have something to give to whom he has? What is the basis of working in this scripture? Put it in NLT. He says, don't steal anymore. You need to work. The reason behind working is generosity. That is what simply he's saying. He says, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good work and then give generously to others in need. That's the whole idea. I'm not saying don't invest. You get me? But part of your commission in working is giving. It's being generous. It's scriptural. So when you work, always think, I work for my needs. I work for savings and I work for generosity. So, because now if you're doing that, so now you understand if that is a mind. If you're paying your bills, if you're investing, what are you doing else? You're also giving. You have a giving account. Some of you should go and open a giving bank account. This bank account is my giving. Every money that comes in, the way you have put your money, every money that comes in, set aside. Why? Because giving is appropriation. Set aside money that this one is for giving. Are you okay? Some of you should, as you're making your new year resolution, that is something that you should do. What is my giving like? So that, to, so that you are not like, oh my God, I don't know who to give next. Do you know there are many opportunities to give? If you plan and give appropriately, you can go at the begin, at the end of this Christmas, do this. Look at how many ministries do I want to give? Definitely the first place you give is here. So just, yeah, and we are beginning. So after you've planned giving in Fortress a larger amount, what else are we giving? Which, here's something I want to tell you, and this is something we do with my wife. Look for a pastor, especially that might be struggling, and put an amount to support. I dare you to do it. So I I'm, I'm know that money might not be coming here. You get me? But I'm just telling you, that's one of the best things you can do. Can you look for a pastor and say every month, uyu pastor airtime ya thawomoja atakuwa na pata. And send it maybe as airtime. Just, po you know, posture your life as a giver. If you're not planning for giving, you're not going to give. Secondly, so the first one is uh, giving is a heart issue. The second one, is giving should be by faith. Giving should be by faith. Uh, Hebrews 11.4 Because then, so we see in the life of Abel that the man was, the man that then, uh, we see in the life of Abel that the man gave what? We've seen what? That the man gave out of his heart. Out of how he purposed in his heart. Then we see something else in Abel. And then we stop here because I have like three more points. It was by what? It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable weight. So which means the giving of Abel is the first giving we see. And in Hebrews they reveal to us that that was a giving of faith. So what is a giving of faith? Because it shows that, that anybody that should be a giver the way to give is to give by faith. That is why if you're being manipulated to give, you will give out of the manipulation, not out of faith. Which means most of the money you have given because of manipulation, you lost. 
I'm sorry to tell you. Because you never gave out your faith. Some of you say, guy, millions of zote nilipatia. But you were manipulated. There was no faith in it. You are taken advantage of. The only thing you can say is restore. Are you getting me? It should be your faith. Why? It should be, all giving should be your faith. I repeat, all giving should be your faith. I repeat, all giving should be your faith. What do we mean by faith? Can we go up there and see what faith is? You, you want to be reminded what faith is? Okay, let's go to verse 2. Let's go to the previous verse. It says, the, uh, the previous one, verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. It says, verse 1. It says, faith is a confidence that what we hoped for will actually happen. Let's stay there. Faith is a confidence of what we hope for will actually happen. Giving should be by faith. Which means when I'm giving, I'm giving hoping for something. I repeat. Which means anytime you're giving, there should be an expectation. The giving of faith expects to receive. Forget all those pastors that told you, no, you don't give to receive. No, you give to expect that you shall receive. That is the giving of faith. Because this is what faith is. So when you're giving, you're giving to receive. Now it says, it gives us the assurance about things we cannot see. Okay. So I know many of you are asking me, show me scriptures, show me places of giving and faith. So a woman goes into the temple and, and, and begins to pray. He says, oh God, if you give me a what? A son, I will give them to you. So what was he saying? He made a vow that if he, because, the, because she must have read, the Bible is, it is, it is God who gives seeds to the sower and bread to the eater. So she was saying, give me a seed. The son, Samuel, was a seed. What was a seed for? That child was a seed for her womb to be opened. And so what did she do? When she gave in faith the son, she got three more boys and two more girls. Her own. What was that? It was a partnership of her giving and her faith. So when you're giving, you need to begin to partner and begin to say, no, 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 Father, thank you for these resources you've given me. Don't just give. Give in faith. Father, I thank you for this money that I'm about to give. I thank you by this money, my children will never lack. That is a giving of faith. So that you don't just give. Uh, which means the idea is send your resources on assignment for what you want for yourself. So on Sunday, when you're taking your, your offering, what you should be doing is sending your resources. Your, you should be prophesying to that offering. What you want, what you want to see. Because it's a faith action. Because how, how sure are you that as I give, I can get it? Okay, some of you are asking questions. Let's go back to verse 4. I hear the question, so let me ask. Let's go back to verse, to the same verse. Uh -huh. It says, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave what? It gave evidence. It gave what? Evidence. Secondly, he says that he was a righteous man and God showed him approval of his gift. Now notice, although Abel is dead, is Abel dead? Guess why we are talking? Guess why we are using him as an, as an example? It is because of his offering. The reason why we are talking about Abel is because of the offering. He says he still speaks to us. What is he speaking to us? Giving by faith. Why? As, by his example of faith. The man, Abel today, Abel died, but he's still speaking. This is Abel speaking. Are you getting me? What activating that speaking? It was his giving. Can you notice? His, now, I want to say this. You're, you can trust God for something. You know, most people think that if you're trusting God for a car, you must give a car. No, 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 no. Or if you're trusting God for a house, you must give something that looks... No, 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 no. You can give and trust God for something that is not money. You can give and trust God for a spouse. It is an action and a partnership of faith. Praise the Lord. 
You can actually give and say, Lord, I'm giving these resources. My giving is my action of faith to believe that you're going to supply this. So giving should be your faith. Father, I'm giving you for my children. I believe they will succeed. Begin to put, so that you don't, so those people have, are you noticing that every giving here is thoughtful, is planned, yeah, is structured, is not fua. Have you seen anyone that is giving just anyhow? No. It is structured. It is, it is producing results. Praise the Lord. Let me convince all of you that wonder about giving and receiving. Let me for convince you because I can hear those questions. Are you there? Okay, Acts 20, 35. Let me convince you about giving and receiving with close. Acts 20, 35. Acts 20, 35. It says, and I have been constant example of how you should help those who need. Working hard, you should remember the words of who? The Lord Jesus. What were the words of the Lord Jesus? It is more word to give than to receive, which means true blessing is in giving. I love another version that says giving brings happiness. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It is more blessed to give and to receive. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. What does he say? Says, so let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart. Grudging, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. This, we have already finished about talking. And then now God begins to say what will happen to the giver. What is it? He says, and God is able to make what? After what? After what? So how can you tell me then I shouldn't then trust God for anything he must have given? So anybody telling you, no, no, no. So if you're not also expecting this, you're just doing the first one. You're losing your giving. Don't lose your money. Some of you have given so much and attached nothing. You need, if it is of faith, it needs to have an assignment. He says, and God is able to make all grace to abound towards you. That you may always having all what? Sufficiency. What? In all things may have the abundance of every good work. He says you have uh, sufficient. He doesn't even attach one thing. He says all things. Which means anything that you feel you can give for. You can actually trust God for it. Now, here's the thing. Are you understanding that now you can sow towards a successful next year? Am I making sense? Are you understanding that right now you can begin to decide, Lord, I'm giving a sacrifice. My children shall never be crazy. This is my partnership with you of faith. That craziness will not visit my children. Do you notice that it is an action of faith? Because how sure, what are you telling me? That money will give me some success. It has to be faith. Like, it's only faith that can make you do some of those craziness. That I will give you 10,000. I will put 10,000 and say, Father, this money, it goes to my future and secures my old age. That me, I will not grow old alone. I'm growing old with my wife. You're getting me? Which means God, and it is you to exercise. It's not even me to tell you what to do. It is for you to feel, now, Lord, I have grown in faith. I want to exercise faith on this matter. Because it's of faith. It is what? Faith is a substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things yet unseen. So it is the assurance that I have it. I'm even sowing for it. I believe it will happen. My God, I am so sure. I'm so sure it will happen. I'm going to sow for it. It must happen. This is my... Because one of the many things you'll always see is that faith always goes together with works. There is faith without works is dead. There is always a cons uh, I'm looking for consumulate. What is this? Con, con, yeah? Cons con, commensulate action with faith. There must be a commensulate action that accompanies faith. That is why if you look, look at scripture, everywhere you look at scripture, you'll notice that God had some crazy things happen throughout scripture. Where does he tell guys to walk around the temple? around the city, about the world. The man, the man, he says, it had no capacity of producing anything. Walking, but you see, it was a faith 
that was involved in the action. It says, the Bible says, notice there is always an action associated with your faith. He says, when you believe, he says, when you believe in your heart, what is the thing that marks your belief in your heart? The confession. He says, how did you get born again? You believed in your heart and you confessed with your mouth. That was the action that accompanied your faith that you believed. And that is what we call salvation. So why then do we think that then, no, this one, Napana, you, I believe me, I will not terri have terrible teenagers. And no, for who? Which house? Yeah, oh, you buy out. You kidding me? Anyway, I think it's because there's a question of also I'm tear gas. But you understand? Are you getting me? Yes. So begin to decide. That is your partnership of faith. That is, so when you, so now you understand why men then bring offering when the sermon is being preached. Does that make sense? Does this make, the problem is that most of us grew seeing it. We don't know where it originated. And so because we don't understand it. So when a man says, when a man of God you believe in, you hear him prophesying and decreeing prophetic things. Your partnership of the faith of the word that is being released, your action of faith to the word that is being released, then becomes your giving. Yeah. Is you saying, Lord, I believe this. Yeah. It is the same, same way. Preparation is faith. If you're not preparing for your future, it means that you, like how can you say, God will use me in a mighty way, man, I will be a prophet to nations. My friend, you cannot even prophesy yourself out of a problem. Or you don't even know the if you're planning to be a preacher and a man of God and you want God to use you in a mighty way, I need to see your stewardship of scripture. The approval of a man called by God, his, that approval is preparation. Because preparation is faith that what he said is true. I'll be a man of God. So you cannot be a man of God and not preparing for it. There has to be a partnership between you and God. So can your giving become your partnership for what God wants to accomplish in your life? Yes. Don't just give. So when you come on Sunday, don't just bring your offering. Father, I thank you for what you are about to do in my life. Concerning my office, you will fight my battles in my life. Father, I thank you that my marriage is getting better. I thank you. That is faith now. That is faith now. Luke 6.38 says, God give, give and it shall what? Be given to you. It says, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be put in your bosom. Put it in King James Version. This is my trick of prayer. Let me show you my prayer trick. Is that okay? When I'm praying about giving, this is one of my giving scriptures, my prayer. It says, it says press down, shaking together and running over. What does he say next? Shall who? Shall who? Do what? Shall men what? So if I'm a giver, I should expect what? I should expect that what? Yes. So if I'm a giver, I expect men to give me. I ex I'm expecting another car, by the way. I expect men to give me. It will come. I know it's coming. So I'm expecting it. It's coming. It's coming. I expect men. Why? Let me ask you, people asking, oh, why do you expect men? Because God does not have money in heaven. All the money you need, all the gold is on earth. All the silver is on earth. He owns it, but it is on earth. So what needs to happen is a transfer. The only thing remaining is a transfer from their hand to my hand. That is it. So shall men give to my bosom, whether by transaction whether by business, whether by God waking them in the middle of the night, the whole idea is that in the end, whether as a salary, in the end, men will give. Men will, in the end, men will give. Whether as a my salary here, in the end, Charles, whether as a my salary, men will give. So in the end, God has said, the system of dispersing the money you need after you give is men. Which means when you're doing business, what you're doing is giving God an opportunity to have men place money in your hand because of your giving. Which means there is money God wants to put into your hand. So when you're trusting God for money, don't, don't be rude to people. 
You cannot be a man trusting God to give you resources. And you, you cannot stay with people. I don't like people. My friend, you will stay broke. Which means your people's skills then are important because men are the vehicle how money will get to you. Your people's skills need to be top notch because men are the vehicle how money will get to you. Who will give to you? Yes! God is not, okay, sir, I believe in miracle money. I'm not fighting that he has an ability to open the, to open, the, you know, the sheep. But, but if you notice, if you notice throughout scripture, every provision that looks like that was not mega enough to do anything. Look at any, pro, it was, it was, any provision that looked supernatural was not big enough to do anything big. It was sustenance. But when, when, when God opens an avenue to supply to you a business, a jobs, then those places become the place where resources come in craziness. Is that okay? Are you blessed? Ah, Okay, so Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 15. I didn't know it was going to take this long. Now Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, which when I departed from the Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and what? Please. As concerning what? So let me, let me tell you this. So this ideal of giving and receiving, I, I have more scriptures. I can show you how central giving and receiving is. It is central. Just begin to believe it. That when you give, you must expect to receive. When you give, expect what? I repeat it. When you give, expect to what? When you give, expect what? And I want to say this. Don't expect to receive from the people that you gave to. One of the greatest frustrations is, oh my God, I helped them. I did this for them. I did this for them. How can they? My friend, please get over doing things for people and them forgetting you and not repaying you. It's fine. They are not the reward system. The Bible says, give and they shall come back to you. Press down, shaken together, shall men, not the person you helped. Not the person you... So you might help someone and they, they, not, they go and become billionaires. They are not your reward system. Your reward system is not tied to a man. How money will come back to you is not, is not to one man. God says, shall men. It is actually plural. So someone, because of one person I give. So don't limit yourself to one person being your giving back. Some of you are bitter, and I feel like this is a prophetic word. Some of you are bitter of someone you help and they forgot you and they treat you bad and you're saying, oh, I helped them. I was there for them. Now, 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 now I can't. Uh, I, 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 now they are blessed. They forgot me. They can't. But you're limiting your supply. That is lack of faith. Don't cut yourself off receiving because of where you're expecting to harvest. The place where you plant is not necessarily where you will harvest. Get over them and begin to say, God, you said, my God, if I give, shall men send those men. This one might not be responding, but you have a man for me somewhere. This one might have been misbehaved because probably they, most of the time is their heart is covered with pride. Their heart is crowded with whatever it might be. And so they even don't see the need of you. But God has guaranteed harvest for you. That harvest might come from a stranger. That harvest might come from from the least expected. That harvest, you might even help someone. You're even could be your brother and sister. You help your brother and sister and they got educated. You are the one that was their mother. And now they are billionaires and they are calling you and looking at you with an attitude. They are still not your harvest system. They are not your reward system. Okay, so are we convinced about giving and receiving? That it is faith to expect so you don't, faith is expecting when you give. Faith is expecting from God when you receive. 
when you give. Let's, let's close here. Next verse. He says about, he says, now next verse, let's move quickly. Even in the Salonica, you did not send, uh, you sent aid once and again for my necessity. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about this one of these days when I'm talking about the men of God. But what was this giving for? For whose necessities? So when you're thinking of your man of God, you could be visiting here. Please just know that there is giving that you give to the necessities of the pastor. At times, by your pastor. No, like, yeah, okay, amen, amen, amen. Buy your pastor some necessities. Buy them. He says, not that I seek notice. The giving was not for who? The giving was not for him necessarily. I've said this scripture. He says, but I seek what? So when you give, what should happen? When you give, you should expect fruit to abound to your account. It is disorder when you're giving and there's no fruit that is a, um, a coming to your account. You should expect it. And the reason why that happens is because most of us don't know how to give by faith. All my giving, I expect that there is fruit that is going to come to my account. I expect that there is fruit that is going to come to my account. Let me tell you a story. I've just remembered something silly. You know, back in, you remember that time I was telling you, I told you, I think yesterday I was telling guy. I don't know why I remember that story. It's a very emotional one. Back in 2000 and I think 19, I was, I, I've been her pastor. So in that particular time, God told me to shut myself in the house. And so it was over Christmas and I was praying and fasting. Some of you should not go to the village. You should pray and fast. Fujifunge. So we are going to see your elders, and your aunties that are going just to abuse you and, and show off their wealth. And maybe just, you know, your uncle that will ask for a CV and not give you a job. Anyway, you get me? And I was, it was over Christmas, my friend, locked in the house without a penny. This is a testimony. <laughs> I've this is very emotional for me. Without a penny, around this time, praying like crazy, telling God, God, you know what? I'm a giver. You must supply. And out of nowhere, Celia called me and said, man of God, I don't know. She actually sent me something. And then she said, I just felt like God said, I should give you this amount of money. Let me tell you, you know, you, I, I know gifts that have been given. I'll never forget that one, Celia. I'll never forget it. That was life-changing. That's how I survived that Christmas. That's how I survived a Christmas. Can you imagine? So, can you imagine what you can do to a man of God this Christmas? Can you imagine what you can be to a man of God this Christmas? Imagine you can encourage a man of God even with 500. Mudo wa guy, kwa ni kuku ni how much? Wacha ni kununulie kuku mbili. Si jitetei, msiseme na jitetea. Si jitetei, sawa. I'm just saying, that is it. But the giving, there is fruit that should come to your account. What am I saying? There is receiving that should come to you. Paul said there should be fruit. Which means, the giving you have given the whole of this year, there should be something in your account. That should be your claim. Father, I thank you that I've given. Thank you that giving should bring something into my account. Thank you that you're causing something to come to my account. Thank you for gifts you're releasing my way. That's your prayer. And that's what you should be expecting. The reason why I'm saying this is because I don't want people to be frustrating, ju frustrated just giving. This, the frustration in giving for many people is because they expect nothing. Yet throughout scripture, there is a promise for something when you give. Next verse. Every time I expect to receive. It's our faith action. It's our partnership with God. The 20 million we need, we, because we, we are not just praying and expecting. No, no, no. There has to be a faith action to the 20 million we need. We already have seed in the ground speaking for us. What is a seed? We already have a van. We already have a van. Yes. And even around here, I've been looking at men of God that are building 
Ask my wife, I've been looking at men of God that are building. Nantatuma miyatano pale. Elfu moja pale. Elfu mbili pale. What am I doing? The Bible says, he that cast his bread upon many waters. So for me, that's my, that's my faith action. In preparation for the 20 million. I believe, that is me now in my faith. I believe we shall own this place. Whether, at, uh, yani, the faith of owning my property. This property for the church. Uh, that is now my level of faith. That, that, is, that is the ideal of faith. So you know 2022. Don't, don't let the year to happen. Don't let 2023 to happen. What you do, you need to be strategic. That is now the warfare for the year. And when you get it, you're like, Lord, this seed I'm giving for resources to open up in 20. I'm not going to be poor. I'm going, not going to lack. This year will be a prosperous year as I give. Indeed, I have all and I abound. I'm full of having received from you. And then he says, uh, the giving that he gave. Now look, look at this so that you never confuse. Who was given? Who was given? Who was given? Answer me. This is the last verse. Who was given? Who was given? He says, I have indeed all. I have all and I abound. I am full. Having received from Ephroditus the things you sent for, they are what? A sweet smelling aroma. You getting me? An acceptable, wait, wait. Who received? Paul. Why is it an acceptable sacrifice? Well, pleasing to God. Notice how it appears. It appears they are giving to a man. Your giving to church appears before God as something. It appears. That is now, now you understand why a man's giving can now become, it has appeared before me as a memorial. It didn't be, it was not a one-time thing. It is something that happens. Your giving appears before God. Is this a, do you feel like I've misinterpreted the scripture? We can go back. They gave to Paul. It appeared as a sm sweet smelling aroma, acceptable and well pleasing to God. So some of you give just anyhow. And God is like, wait, <laughs> he, <laughs> okay. Uh, you understand? Think that way. You shall get more with giving. Think that way. You shall gain more with your giving. Because apparently it's not going away. But I'm just trying to teach you to be a skillful giver. To get the most out of your giving. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's it. Is there any, read the next verse. Verse 19. Anyway. And this is it. The reason, the reason I was coming to this. <laughs> this is where I was ending. So notice all he has done. And the Bible says, And my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches, his glory. Who's God? Who's God? Who's God? Who's God? Why? Because I supplied, imagine. Because I supplied to Paul. So when you give in a church and we start here and we begin to decree, we decree that God shall bless you, shall increase you. It's not a ritual. There is a precedence in scripture. In short form, there was an assignment, there was a prophetic word that proceeded from the giving that came forth. Which means all their needs were supplied. Why? Because they gave. That is why when you're giving, always prophesy to your offering. That is what Paul shall do. I've received the giving. My God, my and my God shall supply. Now, so now when you're giving next, don't just give. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Because this seed shall cause a breakthrough at my... Thank you that my business is shifting from here. My business is... I'm getting better deals and you give. Send it on assignment.